Got a picture of my mama I like to keep around So beautiful and fair No more than 17 She looks like a starlet on the movie screen Prettiest wave in her hair You can see it in her eyes there's nothing but blue skies on her horizon and innocence to spare. No fears, not yet. No tears or regrets. Just dreams as big as they come. So brave, so free. Her world on a stream. I'll share a story. Are you going to get that from me? God bless you. Uh, I don't know where I put it. But <laughs> he'll, he'll find it. It's laying around in there somewhere. I've had, I've, I really have had quite the trip, quite frankly. Um, I packed all my stuff up yesterday in Atlanta, Georgia. Actually, I live in Smyrna, Georgia, just a little north of Atlanta. There you go. One of my Smyrna friends here. Um, I packed all my stuff up, got it in the car. Guitars, music stands, all kind of stuff. Got in the car, took off. An hour and a half later, my wife calls. A big hand. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Anyway, my wife calls like an hour and a half later. I'm going down the road. She says, where are you? I said, well, I, I just kind of passed through Macon, and um, I'm still on 75, you know, heading south. You forgot your clothes. 
<laughs> I went, what? She said, you forgot your clothes. You packed everything, and your clothes were hanging right there at the closet, and you didn't get them. I went, oh, great. So these jeans are kind of what you get. And uh, I went to your mall and bought this shirt yesterday. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Snazzy. <laughs> I assure you all that is not because of my age. That's just who I am. I do that kind of stuff all the time. But I am 71 years old and might make a difference. I don't know. and sisters in a harder world than yours don't clutch your cross and act like you're appalled cause the wind blows both ways the wind blows both ways the wind blows both ways the wind blows both ways, the wind blows both ways. some of us sail on a sea of glass some of us fight the waves, the wind blows both ways, the wind blows both ways. should have known better than to do that. I'm sorry. Well, who needs a little mercy tonight? Huh? I 
think if we admit it, all of us do, don't we? When I was a kid, I worked every summer at my dad's store. He, he ran a little uh, produce market in Marietta, Georgia. And uh, we kind of um, affectionately called it the fruit stand. You know, I was like, oh, I'm going up the fruit stand. It, but it was it wasn't really a fruit stand it actually had walls and a ceiling you know it was <laughs> it was just it was just a produce market and uh in the back there was a if you went through a door in into the back of the little building there there was a cafe and uh every day at lunch people from all over the community would pile in that place i mean they would pack it out to eat a plate lunch you know homemade southern vegetables um and we were near a hospital, so you'd see doctors and nurses and surgeons all sitting around, and uh, truck drivers and guys that pumped gas and postal workers and um, people who just got hungry and came anyway, regardless of their job or not, you know. It really was kind of a fascinating place to be, and I, I don't think I appreciated it a whole lot when I was young because... To me, summer was when I was supposed to be out swimming with my friends and just having a big time. And Dad always insisted that I work for the family business every summer. So at the time, I kind of grumbled a little about it. But, um, but I saw so much life there, you know. And years later, when I started writing songs, I really realized how much of life I took in in those years. And a lot of that found its way back into the songs that I was writing. And this is, this is one of those songs. It's a story about a guy who, um, who has recognized his need for mercy in his life. This is called The Gift of Mercy. I don't know why I stole the money Just seemed like a good idea at the time The place I worked for didn't need it At least that's how I worked it out in my mind I grabbed the bag beneath the counter Crossed the railroad tracks and fled I should have called the sheriff But they just called you instead It was a game of mercy like nothing I deserved if I ever get to heaven it'll be mercy not justice that served sometimes I want how you stand me with all my treachery and doubt I've broken windows just for meanness broken hearts for an easy way out I pawned your locket to pay a phone bill Swore to you I'd get it back That was a year ago, December And you still ain't said nothing about that Oh, the gift of mercy Is more than I deserve. And 
If I ever get to heaven, it'll be mercy, not justice that serves. Love is like a candle blazing in the wind. It don't give in. You've been burning for me so long. Don't think I haven't noticed how hard it's been. So if you're thinking of leaving, I wouldn't blame you in the least. There ain't no rules you have to follow. No shining star up in the east. But if you still believe in miracles, I'm trying to turn my life around Don't give up on me, darling Lost sinners still can be found Oh, the gift of mercy Ain't nothing I deserve But if I'm still holding you tomorrow It'll be mercy Not justice that's served And if you're still loving me tomorrow It'll be mercy Not justice that serves. Well, a lot of my songwriting friends will tell you that there's no such thing as a writer's block. That ain't true. I know, because I've had them. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess it kind of depends on how you just, how do you describe it. Because uh, it's not that I completely quit writing when I'm blocked. It's just that I write badly. And I guess that's the real definition of a writer's block. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm sitting there with a pen in my hand, but that don't mean nothing, you know. Um, a few years ago, I, I had kind of been going through one of those periods, and my wife will tell you that when I'm not writing, I can kind of get kind of crabby. And this had been going on for two weeks. And I walked through the kitchen one day, and... Uh, my wife, Pamela, was in there ironing. And rather than walking in and saying, hey, hon, how's it going? I walked in and said something like, man, I can't believe it. I hadn't written a song in three weeks. I just, I'm just miserable. I just, she put her iron down. She looked me square in the eye. And then using her foot, and I know that she did this for dramatic effect, she put it on a kitchen chair and just pushed it over to me. She says, look, I've been listening to you whining for the last two weeks. I want you to take that chair and take your guitar and go out in the backyard and put the chair somewhere where you've never written a song before and sit down and write it and don't come back in until you bring that song. <laughs> I thought to myself, but I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> well, my wife is a great motivator. And uh, 
she really knew what I needed to do and what I needed to hear. <clears throat> so I went out in the back, and uh, there was this huge poplar tree out there. I'm sad to say that tree's no longer in the backyard. It finally just got old and died, and we had to move it. And that was a heartbreaking day for me because this was my tree. I sat down at the base of that tree. It was June. All the leaves were on it. It was, it was just beautiful sitting there, and I just, I just started doing this. And every once in a while, I'd look up, thinking surely some inspiration's gonna come out of that tree. I'm glad to say that uh, this song just fell right out of that tree. Back in my hometown, everything's green. Green grass, green leaves, green peaches on the trees in spring. Green jello, green beans, and the kids don't know a thing. This dirty old city, everything's gray. Gray ceilings, gray walls, gray traffic that barely crawls. Gray nights, gray days, and everybody feels that way. Gray. But every night, have the same sweet dream I'm nowhere gray I'm someplace green Coming here baby was a big mistake It's too crowded too cold too far from you and home too hard and it's too mean. Nobody here believes in me. But I close my eyes and it almost seems I'm right there beside you. Someplace green. I feel the warm September sun Hand in hand we start to run Down streets with names I recognize There's so much laughter in your eyes We lay down to catch our breath And I can smell the new mowed grass and There's your perfume in the air God, I wish that I was there Say up in heaven, everything's gold. Gold stars, gold crowns, gold streets you can walk right down. And golden harps make golden sounds for every poor lost soul that's found. Down here tonight, heaven for me ain't nowhere gold. It's someplace green. I close my eyes and it almost seems I'm standing right beside.
Oak Ridge Boys recorded that song, by the way, which I thought was kind of amazing because they're like a gospel quartet. You know, it's like four of those guys, and they, they, they all sing at the same time all the time. And I thought, you know, that song seems weird. I, the publisher I was working with in Nashville said they were going to pitch this song to the Oak Ridge Boys. I went, ah, oh, they're not going to go for that. that. That's like a folk song. Well, they did it, and it sounded great. <laughs> So anyway, thank you, Oak Ridge Boys. That was cool. Well, do you guys remember the first time that uh, God got your attention? I kind of do. I think it's different for everybody. Not everybody that comes to Christ comes to him the same way and we all have our different stories but um, in my case the first time God got my attention I was at a place called Ridgecrest in western North Carolina Ridgecrest was a conference center that was owned by the Baptist Church and I grew up you know in the Baptist Church and I was in the RAs and uh, I don't know if you guys know what the RAs were, but the RA stands for Royal Ambassadors. So I was a Royal Ambassador, and basically what that was is it was Cub Scouts for Baptist boys, you know. So, uh, so we did all the fun things that you do um, when you're an RA. I mean, we, we did leather work. We, we made belts and wallets and gave them to our parents for Christmas, and uh, we went around the community and picked up trash, and then the mayor made us stand up at the uh, council meeting and bragged on us for being good citizens. And, uh, it was it was all of those kind of things, you know. And uh, I actually liked it a lot. I, I when I was a kid, I I wasn't real crazy about church because I didn't like sitting still very much. <laughs> But RAs was fun, man. You could hammer away on a piece of leather, and next thing you know, you got something. Um, so, uh, so anyway, long story short, I was at Ridgecrest, and there are mountains in Western North Carolina, and right behind the conference center where we were staying, there was a big mountain, and our leaders told us that we were going to do a night hike. And uh, everybody had to have a partner for the night hike. And they assigned us two guys, you know, per partnership. My partner was the pastor's son. And uh, I figured that was okay. He, his family was a lot more religious than mine. I figured it's probably a good idea to have somebody, if you're walking in the dark out in the wilderness, I have somebody that really knows how to pray. And, and uh, uh, so they kind of spread us out. So it really felt like you were just you, just you and your buddy walking along. I mean, you didn't see the people in front of you. You didn't see the people behind you. Uh, you just kind of snaked up the mountain. And we got about halfway up there. And uh, we looked up. And the sky was really incredible. It was so dark, and there were so many stars. And uh, we just sat down in the middle of the trail and kind of leaned back on our elbows and looked up for a while. And my little friend, who always said the right thing, said, man, can you imagine a God so big that all he had to do was speak a word, and all that came into being? And... Uh, I, to be honest, I couldn't imagine a God that big. And I had never really thought about it. And I think for the first time, God tapped me on the shoulder a little bit. I mean, I looked up and I started thinking, man, the God that they keep talking about at church is that kind of God? He's that big? He's that powerful? Uh, that kind of was a seed that was planted in my heart. And I think it grew over the years. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful for the RAs. They set me on a path. And this, uh, this song was inspired by my trip up that mountain. my 
my bag beneath a diamond-studded Carolina sky. Only 12 years old, but I was already wondering why. Why are we here? Does anybody care? Is God really watching us from way up there? All I could see was that big old sky full of stars. I was a Baptist kid, me and all my Baptist friends. We walked down in the water, went under and came up again. That big old sky full of stars. Oh, 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 oh. Funny how things can change. There was so much I was so sure about. Now there's so much I can't explain. I'm on the outside looking in Staring through the stained glass And wondering where it's all gonna end He's Praying God to help us Pulling on his sleeve Asking if there's something A man can still believe He said just look up Sonny that big old sky full of stars Just gaze up into that big old sky full of stars Yeah, it's all that mystery That big old sky full of stars Eventually, trusted Christ in 1970, right about the time I graduated from high school. And uh, I did not have one of those dramatic testimonies where God pulled me up out of a life of degradation, drug addiction, and all those kind of things that you always hear these dramatic testimonies. I mean, I was just a little suburban kid who went to church and never quite understood it all. And then one night, somebody at a youth revival explained to me that Jesus loved me, and that he had given his life for me. And if I would just put my faith in him, he'd come into my life, change my life. And um, he went into greater detail than that, but that was the basic thing. And sure enough, I went down front that night, and. I prayed a prayer that was the only thing I knew to pray. I just said, Lord, I believe in you. I believe that you sent your son so that I could be forgiven of my sins. And I want you to come into my life. Forgive me. Make me whoever you want me to be. You have my whole life. And it was an emotional moment for me. But uh, the invitation time kind of came and went, and I just went home. But I felt like a different person. And not everybody experiences that right away. Or I mean, everybody has their own experience when they accept Christ. But, but mine, something had changed inside of me. I didn't quite understand what it was, but I knew that I was not the same person that went to that meeting that night. And I laid in bed, and I remember laying there just looking up and thinking, man, I don't know what's happened, but I, I feel the happiest I've ever felt in my life. 
It's really something. It was just really something. It's emotional to me now, just thinking about it. it was, what a great night. Um, I started writing, getting serious about writing songs. I had written a few songs before that, but I got serious about writing songs after that because I think for the first time I felt like, man, I got something to say, man. I got something I want to tell people about. And uh, so I started writing songs, and my church let me play at the, their little coffee house they had on Friday nights, and I started playing all around the area like that. And, uh, man, I was writing two or three songs a week, you know, I was just was excited. So uh, I kept doing that, and eventually a couple of guys got together with me, Randy Bug and Sonny Lollerstedt, and we formed what was called the Pat Terry Group. And really the only reason we called it the Pat Terry Group is because I had already been playing around the county for a while, and people kind of had started hearing my name. And they said, and Sonny and Randy said, well, let's just call it the Pat Terry Group because people kind of already know that you're out here making music and we don't really need a group name, do we? And I said, well, okay, Pat Terry Group, that's what it is. So we were, we, uh, we were a true trio. Just had my name attached to it because I was writing songs. <laughs> but um, we were fortunate that we got a, a record deal with a, a label that had, just recently started it up and they were gonna they were doing something that they were calling Jesus music. It was contemporary music for kids and um, high schoolers, you know. And uh, we we recorded a, an album and songs like this. I can't wait to see Jesus in his glory as he bursts from the sky. I can't wait to be held in his arms and see the glimmer in his eyes. Tell me how it's going to be. Read it from the Bible again. I can't wait to see Jesus because Jesus is coming again. I can't wait to hear trumpets Cause I know what they mean when they sound I can't wait to cast off my burdens Feel my feet leave the ground Tell me how it's gonna be Read it from the Bible again I can't wait to see Jesus Cause Jesus is coming again I can't wait to see heaven and to walk those streets of gold. I can't wait to check into my mansion and get my sleeping bag unrolled. Tell me how it's going to be. Read it from the Bible again. I can't wait to see Jesus. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. We used to play that song at churches, and it, it never failed. About every third church we played at, when we'd finish the concert, somebody would back me into a corner. And uh, this is, this is I don't mean anything bad about deacons, but it was almost always the head deacon, you know. And he'd say, son, I enjoyed that music tonight. I do appreciate that. I appreciate you boys sharing your testimony. But there's not going to be any sleeping bags in heaven. <laughs> I kind of thought to myself, well, how do you know? You haven't been there yet, you know. <laughs> Could be. Didn't stop us from singing that song. And 
I don't claim that there are sleeping bags in heaven, but could be. I used to go up to my church in the middle of the day when I wasn't in school. Because now I had started college and I would come home on weekends. But I would go up to the church when nobody was there and I'd take my guitar and I would just sit down on the front pew and just play guitar and sing because I just liked the way it sounded in the room, you know. Um, and this song was, was written in there. It's been a while since I've played it, so cut me some slack. <laughs> stopped its playing Everyone's gone home But I'm here Wishing that some way we could meet Preacher stopped his preaching But somehow it goes on in my heart Somehow I feel So incomplete You and me All alone In your house Don't know how to say Pastor Rick told me that he and Donna had this next song sung at their wedding. So I thought I would do this for them tonight. Where's Donna? There you are. So if I start this and you don't recognize it, Rick was making this up. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't think that. With this ring I wear, and I give to you my life. Mine is yours, and yours is mine, and we can live that way forever. With this kiss, we will see that we're now man and wife, two in one, one and two. That's the way. songs, man. I'm digging way back. So I apologize if I flub a note here and there. Well, you guys got your trampoline set up for summer yet? You do have a trampoline, don't you? Who's got a trampoline sitting in your front yard? Backyard, right? Okay. Well, this is a song that was uh, that was inspired by a house that my my uh, wife drove by one day, and I was home working on a song, and she came in the front door. And she went, "Man, I just saw the most amazing thing." I said, "Really?" She said, "Oh yeah." She said, "I I guarantee you, th this was so." cool so amazing there's just a story in this i just have to write this and i said well wait a minute before you do that it's probably a song don't you think you know <laughs> she put me in the car and we drove over and we looked at this house and there was this old fella sitting on the front porch who he looked like he was halfway to heaven already but there was about five little kids on this trampoline, and they were just bouncing like crazy, just having the time of their life. And that old guy on the porch, every once in a while, he would just bust out smiling and laughing. And it really was a kind of a beautiful picture of somebody just reaching out and grabbing some joy in life, you know. And... Uh, so I told my wife, I said, that's definitely a song. It's your idea, though, so if you want to write it, because my wife is a writer. She said, 
let me write it with you. I've never written a song before. I said, well, that'd be fun. Okay, let's do that. So we went home and sat down and started working. And uh, we worked the rest of the afternoon. And uh, while Pam cooked dinner, I sat in the kitchen with her, and we kept throwing ideas back and forth. And, uh, and we wrote this song. And I'm glad to say that John Anderson recorded it. So if you want a country singer to record your song, it doesn't get any countryer than John Anderson, you know. And uh, if you don't know John Anderson, you remember that song, Swing, Swingin'? That was John Anderson. It was a big hit. Um, so anyway, uh, I'll do you my version. It's not as good as John's, but I'm all you got, so... <laughs> I'll jump on it. Granny's on the front porch, spitting in a cup, trying to fix a nightgown that the dog tore up. Old time mama's old clothesline, finally dead to dust. Brother got a broomstick. Prop your back up. Could have had a dryer or a sewing machine, but Daddy went and bought us a trampoline. And we jump on it every chance we get. Mama and Daddy and all us kids, we ain't got much, but we got this, and we jump. His eyes bugged out. Daddy says a backflip is what it's all about. The whole town's talking. They say it looks like some white trash circus has hit the neighborhood. But we don't know what in the world they mean. Mama says they're jealous of our trampoline And we jump on it every chance we get Mama and Daddy and all us kids We ain't got much, but we got this And we jump on it Oh, yeah Friend of mine built this guitar, and uh, 
and just gave it to me. Wow, that's what I said too. <laughs> His name's Sam Skinner, and he builds beautiful guitars. And uh, I really love this, and it it it, it has inspired different different songs. Whenever I sit down with this guitar, it's like I write some kind of different kind of song on it. So, um. On December nights so cold and damp Saw him standing at the top of the exit ramp With his bottle of Windex and a filthy rag And his dirty old rain-soaked duffel Drove up to the light looking straight ahead Hoping for green instead of red I could feel him staring through my rolled up glass But I caught a break and rolled on past I couldn't help thinking what that must be like as I laid down those clean, clean starch sheets that night Some sweet girl's husband's for his life got wrecked. A singer or a soldier or somebody's priest. Just one of those Jesus called the least of these. Or he could have been me in a different life. Sleeping on clean start sheets at night. Taking for granted his nice warm bed, food on the table, a job to stable, and a roof over his head. Going to church on Sunday, singing all those songs, and stopping for lunch on the way back home, and never dreaming that anything ever change ever mm
week or two later, I passed his spot. The only soul there was a traffic cop. He blew on his whistle and waved me through. As the city kept churning and the car horns blew. But as I drove on down that boulevard, I got to thinking how life can deal the cards. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we all just need a friend A friend who'll stop and do what's right On a cold and damp December night Someone who knows what grace is like Sleeping on clean start sheets at night Leaving on clean start sheets at night. Well, uh, I'm one of the few singer-songwriters that always leaves the stage injured. It's just a very strange thing. Well, singing those old songs that I played that were kind of from the 70s era is interesting for me. Uh, as you can tell, I stumbled over a few of them because uh, I don't play that many of them. I don't play them that often. Uh, and it's not that I don't appreciate them or that they still don't have some meaning in my life, but I'm always looking down the road, you know, and I'm, I just, I want to I wanna do something new. I want to do something fresh. And, uh, and I think that's what Jesus has called us to do. Um, we need to be out there amongst them, sharing our faith and serving people. You know, it's, it seems like some days in church circles it just seems like a, a fruitless deal where the only thing you hear anyone talking about is politics or you know who they disapprove of or, you know I could never stand in unity with that guy you know uh, man I don't think we're called to that kind of stuff not that we're not called to address issues that we see going on around us we are but our our first calling is to follow christ with hearts that are humble and and uh with a love for service for people who need us i mean jesus was out healing the sick and feeding the hungry he told us to do the same things so uh, we need to we need to be about that and I love the good old days, just like everyone else. Uh, I can think of a lot of times back in the 70s and 80s when I was first starting to make some music. That they, were, they were really great times. But uh, I'm interested in, in moving ahead. And this is, this is kind of an interesting song. I, I, uh, when, I, when I wrote this song... really had no idea what it was going to be about it's just the first the first line of this song just popped into my head for some reason and uh, I just started following it and this song came out this is called Who's Good Old Days 
raise a glass to the good old days simpler times in simpler ways when we were old enough to have our fun not too old to die young life is such a mystery we can long for going back but we can't rewrite our history we can only face the facts Back in 1964 in my little Georgia town Before Aretha sang respect And Dr. King was still around We were all about guitars and girls And that Liverpool sound Growing out our hair Man, we were blissfully unaware Everyone looked just like me in my eyes. We drank from any fountain that we wanted to. We sat at Woolworths County on the front seat of the bus. No one aimed a fire hose at any of us. Up the road from our house and across the railroad tracks There were streets I'd never seen A whole nother world, in fact They had their own school and their own church A little graveyard out back Where they laid their souls to rest Just like everybody else The summer came they didn't swim in our pool Or walk down streets Their mamas told them not to Or even act like they were listening When those redneck boys rode through Screaming hateful stuff from their pickup trucks Like no decent folks would do Good old days, do you want to go back to? Whose good old days do you miss? Sometimes you leave behind and never return to. You just remember it all for what? Ask yourself this Whose good old days Do you miss Whose good old days Do you miss There's things we can't Go back and change The scars remain You'd think by now We'd have found some way to heal there's always some fool Who never walks in someone's shoes Or tries to understand How someone else feels So whose good old days Do you want to go back to? Whose good old days Some things you leave behind and never return to. You just remember it all for what it is. Then you ask yourself this Who's good old?
thought we were way past this Whose good old days do you miss? Whose good old days do you miss? Whose good old days People have uh, two questions for songwriters. And they're always the same two questions. It's kind of odd to me how that works, but it's true. Someone always comes up after a concert and asks me, which comes first, the music or the lyrics? I never really thought about it until people started asking me. But my answer is that uh, one kind of works with the other. I don't think of it in terms of a song of, you know, a lyric coming first, you know, an idea, a big idea. It's kind of rare that that, that happens. Uh, sometimes the guitar chord just makes me think of a certain lyric. Just something, a feeling in that chord, you know. It's, it's, it's funny. The other question they ask is, where do you get your ideas for your songs? It's, I, I can tell you some songs. A lot of them I have no idea. And this one came really just kind of out of the blue, and it kind of shocked me. It's like the first couple of lines of this song just kind of popped out of my mouth. I was sitting there just kind of banging on my guitar, and these first two lines just popped out, and I thought, geez. What a weird thing to say. What does that, what does that mean? You know, I thought, man, I'm going to get in trouble for this song. But actually, it's kind of become one of my favorites. If Jesus was like me, he'd seem like an all right guy. Till the first time he healed someone or turned some water into wine. Then he'd talk too much and act way too proud. They'd say, There goes that Jesus again, running off his mouth. How sad would that be if Jesus was like me? If Jesus was like me, he'd be all merciful to me. Till the first time you made like Judas and kissed him on the cheek, then he'd act all hurt. Point out all your sins And when you ask Would he forgive you He'd say Well that all depends Well how hopeless Would we all be If Jesus Was like me If Jesus was 
was like me He'd mean well But he might not follow through When you needed him to If Jesus was like me Love might be the one thing He tried but couldn't do If Jesus was like me He'd be your closest friend Till the first time you nailed him to a cross For all your sins Then he'd pull the shades Take your number off his phone Let you pound all night on heaven's gate While he pretends he isn't home How lost would we all be Without one prayer or hope Or anything Imagine where you'd be If Jesus was like If Jesus was like me Well, I know I'm about to wear you out. So I'm going to close with one more song. This song is... Uh, uh, song that I wrote a long, long, long time ago. But I think of all the songs I've written, more people have recorded it because there's something something down inside of it that just kind of touches people. And uh, it touches me when I sing it. Um. <laughs> This whole world is too But if they said that I would have To choose between the two I'd go home Going home Where I belong Sometimes Comes as no surprise that if you look, you'll see that homesick feeling in my eyes. I'm headed home, going home where I. for long When I'm feeling lonely When I'm feeling blue It's such a joy to know that I am only passing through I'm headed home Going home Where I While I'm here, I'll serve him gladly, sing him all these songs. 
I'm here, not for long. One day I'll be sleeping when death knocks on my door. I'll wake to find that I'm not homesick anymore, cause I'll be home. I'll be home where I belong. Thank you.